Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Creative Space, a podcast where we explore, learn, and grow in creativity together. I'm your host, Jennifer Logue, and as we gear up for season three, yes, season three, I can't believe it myself, which is launching on Sunday, October 20th, we will be revisiting the most popular episodes from the last two seasons of Creative Space. And today's guest holds a very special place in creative space history, Avi Wisnia, who was my very first guest on the show. Avi is an incredible singer-songwriter who has performed worldwide and shared stages with legends like The Roots and Annie DeFranco. He was also recently featured in the powerful documentary, How Saba Kept Singing, alongside his grandfather, a Holocaust survivor. The film, which is nominated, by the way, for an Emmy next week, so you'll have to tune in and cheer them on, um, it's a moving tribute to family, resilience, and the healing power of music. When I first recorded this episode, the podcast was still in its early days. And to be honest, I didn't even plan on it being a video podcast at the time. And my walls were bare. I didn't have proper lighting. And I don't even think I was wearing makeup, <laughs> but that's okay, because the conversation with Avi was so powerful, so powerful, that it marked the beginning of what Creative Space has grown into today, which is an incredible platform for artists and creatives from all backgrounds to share their journeys and thoughts on creativity. I am thrilled to have the chance to revisit this captivating interview. In this episode, Avi and I cover discovering his passion for music at a young age, the making of the Emmy-nominated How Saba Kept Singing and Performing with His Grandfather in Poland, how music became a way for his grandfather to process trauma and share his story, the ups and downs of Avi's own creative journey, including dealing with loss and grief after losing his brother, the power of community and collaboration in nurturing creativity. I hope you find Avi's story as inspiring as I did when we first recorded it. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Avi Wisnia. Welcome to Creative Space, a podcast where we learn and grow in creativity together. For today's episode, we have the pleasure of speaking with singer-songwriter Avi Wisnia. He's performed around the world in venues like the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City and the Kennedy Center in DC, playing alongside artists like The Roots and Ani DeFranco. He was recently featured in a documentary executive produced by Hillary Rodham Clinton and Chelsea Clinton alongside his late grandfather David, his Saba, um, How Saba Kept Singing. And Avi just has a beautiful creative life, and I'm so excited to chat with him as my first actual official interview for Creative Space, Avi. Welcome. Yes, I'm honored. Congratulations on kickstarting the podcast, and uh, thanks for that great introduction. Happy to be with you. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. Avi, we've known each other for like 10 years. Have we yeah. figured out the mystery of how we actually met? Um, no, I was looking back and I know that we performed together at the Tin Angel in Philly in 2014. Okay. So we've obviously go back further than that. Yeah. So, yeah. 10 years is, it's kind of wild, but I think it must have been something with, with your involvement in rock on Philly, I feel like is maybe where we first met, but I feel like I always you know, like our circles, our circles were always circling each other. So it was like <laughs> bound to it. We were bound to meet eventually, especially with the, the similar trajectory from New York to Philly, you know, completely, completely. Yeah, that too. But uh, yes, and it's been such a joy following your creative journey and all the magical roads it's taking you down. Seriously, really magical. Yeah, some expected, some unexpected, you know. That's what makes it magical. Um, I want to start at the very beginning okay. because this podcast, we're exploring creativity from all angles mm -hmm. and exploring artists' creative journeys and your experience with creativity. When did you first discover your love for music? Well, there is a story that gets told around the Wisnia household 
that I can't remember because I was, I guess, two or three years old or even younger than that. But my parents tell me that from uh, the moment like I could, I had the um, <laughs> the hand-eye coordination to hold chopsticks that I would kind of like go around and drum on everything, you know, just like making rhythms with drumsticks, just kind of like coming up with rhythm and making music um, just with whatever was around and that um, I was going to the keyboard and kind of, you know, fooling around with the keys and really trying to make out melodies from as early as I could stand. So mm. I don't have a lot of memories of the of those kind of early days, but I can't think of a time where I wasn't playing piano and making music. So I know it started early. It's something I was really drawn to. And I think the the thing that really started me of knowing how to make music for myself was when I started taking piano lessons at five years old. Five years old. Wow. Yeah. You're such an incredible pianist. Thank and you, you. Yeah. Yeah, and musician, songwriter, um, and you recently got um, Piano Player of the Year award, I think. Yeah, from the Delaware uh, Valley uh, Public Media um, Awards that awards the the musicians. It's um, local musicians and industry people um, awarding the local music scene. So that that felt, uh, I mean, obviously it was a, a great honor and felt really good because it was coming from my peers and from the community, yes. but also to be named you know, best keyboard player, because I've been playing since I was five, it just felt so validating. Like, mm. you know, I've been playing for a long time and I've been uh, working on my craft and finding my voice on piano. And it's what I feel most comfortable writing with and creating with. So to kind of be recognized for that felt, you know, just really, it was a really special award to win. For sure. Much deserved. And, you know, who inspired you back in those early days as a musician? Well, I remember um, being really drawn to a lot of classic songwriters like Billy Joel and Elton John mm -hmm. and um, Stevie Wonder, Carole King. And I, I think looking back on it, I was always drawn to a really good melody, you know, like a really mm -hmm. good hook, something that I could sing along to or harmonize with. Like that's what really that's what really drew me in. Um, and of course I was listening to the radio and Debbie Gibson and I, I was obsessed with this band. I don't know if you know them, they're called the Jets. If you remember in the eighties, um, there was this like group of, um, oh, I think they were Hawaiian brothers and sisters. Oh my God, I watch, or maybe they had a concert in Hawaii that I used to watch all the time. Oh but my gosh. that kind of, do you know the Jets? I don't, but now I'm going to have to go on a YouTube dive. Go and... <laughs> back. They definitely have like a, they have a best of album and you'll know there are like definitely some radio hits in there, but it, you know, it's kind of like that, um, that accessibility that music had something you could really sing along with and sink your teeth into. But then there was also the, you know, the, the real musicianship of those mm. songwriters that I mentioned that, um, made it not just a fun song to sing along to, but really interesting and did something unexpected um, with it. And I think that's what I got really, you know, I think the, the, the person that excited me the most when I got a little older was Ben Folds, mm -hmm. because he would do these things with the piano that was pop and accessible, but there was like a little bit of punk with it. You know, he would like throw his bench at the piano, or he would incorporate classical music and kind of Scott Joplin stuff into his piano, just really turning on its head what I thought of was a typical um, singer songwriter who used the piano. And, um, and sometimes that's, that's what you need to open up your own creativity, you need somebody to show you the way right what is possible, that something different is possible, and that allows you to create something different. Yeah, and it's so incredible when artists use their art in a way where they're able to reflect the entirety of their life, their experience, like their influences in unique oh, ways. Yeah. And that's just, that is like, you know, that's what we all reach for, right? Well, and I think we're all, you know, we are all the 
combination and the confluence of our influences. Like mm -hmm. we don't come out of a black hole. We don't create something from nothing. Nope. We create something from everything. And so we are the combination of all the influences, everyone who we listen to, every piece of art that you look at, every record that you listen to, um, you know, the people in your life, the people that you love, the people that you hate, everyone that talks yeah. to you, you take all that in and you filter it and you channel it. And it comes out in this unique combination that's only you, that's you. only your voice, but it's filtered with all these people. Um, you know, I have a, I have a song called something new that's totally about that because I was having this songwriter's block about, you know, putting out, who am I to put out my music when there's people like Stevie wonder and, and Billy Joel out there. And, um, in order to kind of get past that, instead of running away from it, I ended up incorporating little bits and pieces of a lot of musicians that had influenced me. Mm -hmm. And it kind of became a, a tribute to them. And, and through their influence, I was able to write this song literally called something new, but to create something new out of that. And you know, that's, it's you pay tribute to the people that came before you, but you find a way to make it unique. Yeah, and take your own experiences and being honest like that. I can't think of, as an artist, I myself feel that. Like, who yeah. am I? We'll talk about this later, but, you know, when you, especially when you have a hiatus from writing yeah. for a while, that insecurity that, like, kind of festers. Yeah, um, there's, always, there's always doubt and self-reflection, and it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a twisty, winding road we lead being a creative people. Yes. And then we fight through it. There's a yeah, light at the end I of the mean, tunnel that other people latch onto and relate to. Like that song is so relatable and like, you know, the world needs that. People need that. Yeah. And you have to fight through it because the thing that I realized was the alternative to fighting through it is you stop, create. you don't create, <laughs> you don't put anything oh. out, you retreat. Oh, and God. Um, I think, you know, when when you're a creative person, when you know it's your passion, you 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 feel it. You feel like that I, I have to put something out into the world. I just feel that drive. And that's kind of what happened with the song. I was like, I have to find a way to just put something out because yes, there are all these great people that came before me, but I want to participate in that. You know, I want to yes. be a voice in that conversation. I think I do have something to say. And sometimes the only way to find it is to start putting stuff out there and see if it feels right or not. And then you change and you mold with it, but you've got to just put it out there to start, to start. To even start for sure. This um, is a very open-ended question, mm -hmm. but this is creative space. So Albi, how would you define creativity? <laughs> I know. Well, I think creativity is making something that doesn't exist you know and it's not again not creating something out of nothing it's creating something out of everything but mm -hmm. creativity is really uh, is really that that struggle to to create something that doesn't exist before and that's through your filter or um, even if you're copying something it can't be an exact copy right and when like i a cover that, song yeah, a For cover instance. song, even even if you're a cover band and you're trying mm -hmm. to play it exactly the same way that somebody else did, it will never be exactly the same they, because it's always filtered through, it's always filtered through you and you're not that other person. Um, and something certainly, I mean, I love doing covers of people's songs and and one of the most fun things for me is taking it and reinterpreting it in a totally different way, you know, do a jazzy version of The Cure or a swanky lounge version of TLC is no scrubs, you know, something right, like right, that. Right. Um, Cause it's so fun. You're also playing with expectations, but they're, um, you know, there are such wonderful pieces of art out there that sometimes it's, it's cool to play with that. Something that's kind of already, already fully formed. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, and I I'll just, when I think of the word creativity, I just think of playfulness. Yes. Like creativity is the ability to play, and and have fun, and that's a lot of what I associate with making music is playing with other people 
and bouncing ideas off of each other. And you always find something that didn't exist before when you, when you do that, you know, jamming, just getting in a room and um, making up songs or playing other people's songs, you know, that inspiration, just that fun. It's, it's having fun and again, making something new. Oh my gosh. That's the best place for it to come from. Yeah. You know, it's just the joy of yeah. creativity. And I feel like the best things come out of that. Yeah. Just... Creativity for me is joy. That's, you know, and it should be, it should be joyful. Even if it's something painful, there's some <laughs> joy in that, you know? For sure. Especially when you're able to take something painful and turn it into something beautiful that other people can relate to and get them through their own experiences, you know, that are similarly painful. Um, 100%. Where do you think creativity comes from? That's, where does it come from? You know, uh, well, we could talk about um, the existence of God or not, but <laughs> there is something, there is something, and my dad's a rabbi. I come from a long line of clergy, right? So there's definitely Judaism has something to say about that, I'm sure. But um, there's there's something transcendent um, about it. And I would, I mean, you know, use the word, I would even use the word divine, even yes. though that might, that might mean different things to different people. But, you know, I just think about um, another song I wrote called Rabbit Hole, where um, and this was, you know, back in my, my college days before I was performing out. So this is a song I still perform. It's on my albums, but you know, I like had started writing it a long time before I was performing. And I just remember it was one night, there was nothing special about this night, but I just had these ideas for these lines and I kept going to bed, getting in bed, getting ready to go to sleep. And then I would like jump up because I would another line, another lyric would huh. come to me and I would write it down. I'd be like, okay, I got that out of my system. I'll go back to bed. And then another line would come. So it was almost like that some something divine, right? Yeah. It's almost like, am I doing this? You know? Um, I dreamt so was, a song yeah. once. Like I woke up and I had this chorus mm -hmm. in my head and it was a good chorus. Yeah. And I'm like, all the next day at work, I'm like, oh my God, like, I got to record this like right now. But it's Did like, you write it down? Oh, we, we recorded it. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's out, in the, nothing left to say. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it it's, it, I'm just like, I didn't do that. Yeah. Like, right? How could I? <laughs> right. Sometimes you're like, how can I take credit for that? But it, right. is, it is you, you know, wherever it comes from. And then there are some songs where you really have to sit down and do the work. Yes. Right. And like make a very conscious effort to figure out these chords or, you know, I've been this, this story going on in my head. How do I write it down? So some things take a little more time than others. But yeah, I think that that ability to create is I, I can't think of any other word for it other than divine. It's just something outside of us or filtered through us um, that we create something. Yeah, I like to think of it as co-creating with the divine, mm -hmm. you know, um, like we don't do it by ourselves. Yeah. But it's, we, we do have to make the choice to obey and yeah. to follow it, right? You've got to be open, right? You've got to be yeah. open to receiving that inspiration wherever it comes from. Yeah, Ooh, I got chills. Ooh, I got <laughs> chills. Um, so let's get back to songwriting. What's your process like? Do you have a typical process when you're writing a song or um, we talked about a few ways in earlier, but yeah, sometimes the, you know, when you have those moments where you have to, you keep jumping out of bed to write, you know, you're, you're onto something that's something special, but um, I don't have a typical process, um, but most usually when I'm writing, it's the music comes first for me. Mm -hmm. Some people lead with lyrics or a, um, or a story or an idea. For me, it's usually um, the music and a melody. So sometimes there'll a be a song. Vocal melody or piano melody? Do you hear like a voice or do you hear piano? That's a good question. I think it's almost like I hear just a line 
and I usually play it out on the piano. Okay. And then on actually a lot of times what happens is I'll start singing gibberish mm -hmm. over it and just like I'm hearing syllables, you know, and then from those syllables, what do those syllables sound like, you know, oh, it sounds like, you know, this kind of phrase with actual words to it. But very often I'll just sing gibberish and just see what comes out. Um, and that sometimes will give me a, a guidepost of like, you know, what is where where do the where do the notes go? What kind of feeling is it? I usually operate from the feeling. What kind of feeling is the song giving me? And then sometimes it's not until weeks or months later where the story settles into place mm -hmm. or the 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 actual words fall into place of like, oh, this is what the song is about, or this is what I want to evoke in actual English and not gibberish. Yeah. This is like blah, 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 number two on my phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's what sometimes that's what it is. Just totally unintelligible, you know. Maybe one day I'll actually write a whole song of gibberish that might, you know. Wouldn't that be fun? For, that would be fun. The the gibberish whole album hasn't stuck yet, you know. But oh my when, gosh. Just like an <laughs> album of everyone's like song like notes on their app on their iPhones. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm sure there are some gems and a whole lot of um a whole lot of trash. There's a whole lot of trash. Also, that should not sound right of day. There are some, there are some gems that we discard too, or at least we don't give them the credit yet. You know. Yeah, maybe they just had to come to song uh, Philadelphia Song Circle, Philly Song Circle. Yeah, that's 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 what we that's what we do. We polish those gems. You know. Yeah, yeah. that's so, so that's, cool. That's another and thing that's given me inspiration is. Um, this song circle that I created with my friend Aaron Nathans, um, where we, um, for nine years now, we've been bringing songs to each other and we've gathered our songwriter community. Started as a, um, just a group of us in my living room. And we slowly got more friends and word of mouth. And um, now we have over 400 members um, that, come and participate and that are connected to us through Facebook and people come from all over, um, you know, all over the area. And once a month we get together and we workshop songs in progress. So we actually get to, um, you know, put these ideas uh, that are not finished, that are not complete, but we get to workshop them with our peers and with other people that understand the creative process. Yes. And a lot of a lot of my most recent songs were, um, you know, were completed that way, or at least, you know, were able to evolve because of feedback that I got from my friends and these people that I trust in this community. I have to say that my favorite songs that I've done have been collaborations. Yeah. Like I'll come with something, but then when you have someone else working with you, it's just a completely different creation and just it opens up so many more possibilities and everyone brings something different to the table that you couldn't have done all on your own and there's yeah. just something so magical and special about that like sometimes it's good to get out of your own head and you yes. you need somebody else to help you do that right yes and mm -hmm. to bring it back to joy you know i think it's the joy is easier to channel when you're with your collaborators and your friends and stuff you know yeah, totally. Just on your own. Totally. Yeah. Left our own devices for too long. <laughs> right. Um, That's true. That's true. You know, when you're left to your own devices, sometimes you can bring yourself down or you you stop yourself from, you start to doubt yourself. All those things creep in, right? And that's what yeah. other people can do, can, um, can help pull us back out of that and keep us going. We all need each other. Yeah. yeah. So. Very true. Making uh, music is definitely a, 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 a community endeavor. Now, segueing a bit to your new album, Catching mm -hmm. Leaves. Um, so it opens, the, the title track, Catching Leaves, opens with these lyrics. I spent the afternoon trying to catch leaves before they fell on the ground. Couldn't predict where they'd go in the breeze. Got tired of chasing them down. And then at the end of the song, you sing... 
sat on a bench and one fell on my knee. Mm-hmm. Like, and when I heard that, I was like, oh man, I was like, that is life. That is also the creative process sometimes. What was yeah. the inspiration for you with that song? Well, quite literally, I was, um, I was actually trying to bring a song to my songwriters group and trying to, um, uh, trying to come up with one. Um, and, uh, I would go to this park near my house in South Philly. It's Palumbo park, it's this cute little pocket park next to the Fleischer art building. And it has this beautiful, colorful, um, autumn mural painted on it. And it was like a beautiful fall day. And I was sitting, sitting on a bench and I was literally just watching the leaves and taking in nature. And I find a lot of inspiration from nature and the natural world in general that works its way into my music. Um, you know, and I saw this, this pile of leaves, you know, kick up with the wind and swirl around in this beautiful chaos. And I said, I want to write a song that sounds the Mm. way that that looks. Mm. Um, so I was literally writing about the leaves, but it's actually, it, the song is very much for me about, um, uh, it is about finding inspiration and trying to grab it, trying to chase it. Um, and sometimes that's, uh, you know, like an impossible feat. Sometimes you have to wait for inspiration to come to you. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened to me sitting on that bench, that leaf falling on my knee at the end is inspiration finally coming to me. You know, sometimes the things that we want, we can run ourselves ragged by chasing them down. Um, But it's really not until we stop and take a breath and take stock of where we are and be present Mm -hmm. that, um, that, that life also happens and realizations can happen creativity can happen you know sometimes we're rushing around too much back to catching leaves it's been 10 years since your last full-length release so do you want to talk about that a little bit like what what happened in that time yeah i mean a, a part of you know relating to uh taking a pause and taking a moment right and needing to find your place and and find your way back to creativity and the things you love. Um, I was dealing with a lot of grief and a lot of loss in my family. And I really, I don't think I realized it for, it took me a while to realize it, that I, what I needed was to take a step back. Um, I lost my brother who was 33 at the time. He's a little older than me. And we were really close, you know, I grew up We've always been close. In fact, he was the first person I ever really made music with. He's the one that kind of taught me how to make music with people. We would jam all the time and, and he would always encourage me to play music with him. And, um, you know, he introduced me to so many, uh, musical artists that I loved and it influenced my musical taste. And, um, so we were very close. And when I lost him, there was just this big hole in my life and I felt very lost. And because making music, I always associated with him. um, It was weird to think about making music without him around anymore. And, um, you know, grief is is not linear. There are ups and downs and, um, you know, like it's not a straight trajectory down or up, it's, you just have to go day, day by day (laughs) and see how it goes. And, um, as I said, it took me a while to realize, um, just how lost I was and that I actually needed to take a step back from music because it wasn't, um, wasn't bringing me joy anymore. Mm -hmm. And especially that process of creating music and recording you really have to focus and you really have to want it and be and know what you're know what you're going for and um i didn't i was i was really lost and i really had to take care of myself yes first and reevaluate what brought me joy and um 
and find my way, try and find a way back to it. Your heart needed to heal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I didn't, I didn't realize that, but I just, I needed that. I needed that time, you know? And sometimes that is taking a, a, a step away from just to get perspective. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's also something that, <laughs> that I tend to do, which I don't know if, if other people do this too, but you know, sometimes you take a step back and you're with yourself just for too long and then you get kind of stuck there. You know? so, I can relate to that, Avi. <laughs> right. Taking a step away is good, but you can also get stuck there. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you need somebody else to pull you back or, you know, something. So that's where, um, having community and friends and family and a good therapist, you know, mm -hmm. comes in, um, but for me, it was always making music needed to like, I really needed to want to do it. And it took me a while to realize that I wanted to do it again. I had to find my way back to that place of wanting to do it. Yes. And part of you coming back to music, you know, we talked a little bit about your grandfather, David, mm -hmm. and how performing with him kind of brought your spark back a little bit. Yeah, this was. I, this was really something I never expected. My grandfather um, was a cantor, so he was a singer all of his life. And he was a singer when he was a young child growing up in Poland. He was a singer later in life um, in congregations in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So um, I always knew him as a singer because I would go and watch him sing. And he had this big booming operatic voice and everybody knew him as the singer. and that, you know, he was always on stage in front of people and so charismatic and so confident. And, um, uh, you know, another part of my grandfather's story is that music saved his life in World War II because he's a, a Holocaust survivor. And he used his voice to kind of make himself useful to the Nazis in a concentration camp. And it's part of the reason that he was able to survive and then come to the United States. Um, so music literally saved his life. And in 2015, he invited me to travel with him back to Poland. So he was nearly 90 at this point in his life. And he was invited to go back to commemorate the liberation of the Auschwitz concentration camp where he was. So he was invited back by the government of Poland to sing at this place where these horrible atrocious things happened to him. And um, first of all, the strength that he had to want to go back there and to, to sing in this place. And grandfather be, is a magical human being. Like, yeah, he's, he's I, watched, incredible. I watched that BuzzFeed video again today, which is a mistake because I was like bawling my eyes out. <laughs> yeah. But just sidebar, you have to watch it. I'm sorry for interrupting, Avi. Please continue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's... Um, uh, he, and in this Buzzfeed video, you get to hear his voice and I'm so glad that we have, you know, some of that preserved, um, him singing, but also him telling his story. Cause it is a, a remarkable and painful, but it's an important story. Yes. Um, and so he invited me to go back to Poland with him to help him travel. Cause he was 90 years old, mm -hmm. but also you know, as I had grown into my own musician, we started performing together. So I would go back and I would play piano for him. And being in Poland, in this place where these horrible things had happened to him, and he had overcome and found a way to move forward after all these horrible things. I mean, his family was killed and um, along with so many other people and the things that he saw and witnessed and experienced. Um, and then I went and I saw him sing in full voice, um, knowing the life that he had created um, and that he was still able to not only to make music, but that music was his, his, his gateway to, um, to talking about things that he wasn't able to talk about or to express things that he wasn't mm -hmm. able to express in words. Um, it was his way of communicating to other people. It was his way of, of bonding with me 
through music and teaching me his music. And when we were kind of arranging music together, um, yeah, and he really inspired me that, you know, and I heard it in his voice that even the horrible things that he couldn't talk about, the pain was there and what he went through was there. Um, and some things, I think I learned from him that some things you never, um, you never move on from, you carry with you, mm -hmm. but you move forward with them. Yes. And, and one of those vehicles, one of those ways to move forward is with music. And so I learned that from him and I found my way back to music with him because I ended up performing with him and helping kind of coax out his story and, and learning some of his music and wanting to keep his music alive. So he would tell me his story and we ended up performing more together and ended up doing programs where he would actually talk about what happened to him. And I was a part of that. I was able to help mm -hmm. him with that. And it was through music, a lot of it, that would help propel the story. And then, I mean, it's, it's just such a beautiful, it, from something so painful, all these years later, you're able you were able to bond with your grandfather in this way, like, and to travel together and to create something together that's making an impact on so many people's lives. You know, like, it's the most incredible story. I mean, I can't get enough of that video and the documentary that got premiered a few months ago at the Hot Docs Film Festival. Yes. How Saba kept singing. I mean, I'm not sure if you wanna talk about that at all, but it's just so sure. moving. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm so grateful that the documentary exists because the documentary follows um, the last time that we went back to Poland together. And it's the last trip that he ever took. You know, he passed away last year in the middle of COVID from not COVID related um, complications. Um, but it was in the middle when we couldn't travel anywhere. So mm. the last thing that we did when the world was open, you know, was travel to Poland and go and do these performances where he grew up and do these performances back at Auschwitz and commemorate, um, at that point it was the 75th anniversary um, of the liberation of Auschwitz. And to have all that recorded in this documentary, you hear his story and his music, um, but you also get to see the two of us making music together. And I get to see him talk about what that means for him, which mm. is just really meaningful for me. Um, and to know that, that his voice will always be preserved. You know, oh. when I was watching that documentary, like there he was oh. like alive and singing again, you know, and, yeah. um, I, that's something beautiful too that I feel like as creative people we we create something and put it out into the world and hopefully and now you know with videos or albums or or you know anything digital that's out there like you create something and it's and it's out there for people to interact with and hopefully it will be long after we're gone but you, you know that's our you can't help but change the world by putting something out there like that. So you've got to put it out, no matter you've how painful, yeah. no matter how hard it might be, because the other side is so much better. Because I, I just think your story with your grandfather is like the, it just the most beautiful thing I've heard in a long time. So I hope people listening to the podcast get to learn more about that too. Um, and you have a website dedicated to this project. Do you want to say the name of that in case people are interested? Yeah, the website is called My Polish Wisnia. Um, and you can find it on, it's a part of my website, aviwisnia.com, because I started um, blogging about our travels together, just making these little posts. And I was so amazed at how um, just how impactful it seemed to be to people, just the response that I got from these posts of people following us and so interested in my grandfather's story and what we were doing and tracing his steps and the music we were making together. 
So I knew I wanted to put all of these posts and kind of the journey of the many trips that we took to Poland together. So yeah, that's on my website and I called it my Polish Wisnia because my last name is Wisnia. Mm -hmm. And in Polish, um, Wisnia actually means um, black cherry. So it's like a flavor. Okay. So cool. everywhere we went, people <laughs> would give us these like cherry flavored um, desserts and vodka and all these things. And, um, uh, you know, it was just such a part of rediscovering that that history. And um, of course, in the Wisnia family, we love to eat. So anything yeah. related is <laughs> also very important very welcome yep yes yes so there's a lot of eating a lot of music making yeah oh my so, gosh and i was able to record it all in this all in this one place and and the documentary um will hopefully be coming out soon we're just waiting for distribution but um yeah it is it is done and it has a lot of incredible support you mentioned um hillary and chelsea clinton um, who are executive producing it. And it's, um, I just know that my, my grandfather would be, um, so happy that his music is out there and, and, and living on. And, um, it was also that finding something that I could be a part of that was bigger than myself. Yes. That also helped me kind of find my way, finding my way back to being like, okay, you know what? I'm ready to take a look at some of my old songs and dust them off and start thinking about putting new things out there and eventually finding the the strength because it really felt like that emotional strength to okay i'm going to put out a new album i'm ready to put new stuff out to, in the world i'm ready to put my voice back out there in the world and um you know it it took that whole journey all that time to realize that it was the right time. Thank you for tuning in to this special rerun of my conversation with Avi Wisnia, the very first guest on Creative Space. His reflections on creativity, joy, and resilience continue to inspire me, especially as how Saba kept singing heads into the Emmys next week, which is so cool. If you haven't yet, I encourage you to check out that documentary and also check out Avi's latest album, Catching Leaves, and dive deeper into his music at aviwisnia.com. I'd love to hear what resonated with you from this episode. Feel free to reach out to me on social media at Jennifer Logue or leave a review on Apple Podcasts so more creatives can discover creative space. Thanks again for being part of this journey with me as we revisit the best of season one and two. Stay tuned for more of the top episodes of Creative Space leading up to season three's premiere on Sunday, October 20th.